If you have been browsing internet and logging into websites, then you must have seen and used the Google's I am not a robot checkbox. That checkbox is the Google's reCAPTCHA service and is used to identify valid users and filter out any bots or malicious requests. So if you want to understand what are the Google reCAPTCHA services and how can we integrate the I am not a robot checkbox into your web pages, then be sure to watch this video till the end. Now this video is divided into chapters. So if you want to skip any part, like you are only interested in the coding part, then feel free to skip to that chapter. Also, if you feel this video is interesting and helpful, then please don't be shy and like the video and also subscribe to this channel to stay updated with more such kind of videos. Now before we start adding the reCAPTCHA checkbox in a web page, first let's have a brief overview of different reCAPTCHA services that Google provides. So basically Google offers three kinds of reCAPTCHA services. First one is the reCAPTCHA version 2, then there is a version 3 and then there is the reCAPTCHA enterprise. So reCAPTCHA version 2 is the one where we can add the I am not a robot checkbox to validate the user's request. It also includes invisible verification. Also Google provides 1 million verifications for free which I believe should be sufficient as far as free services go. Second one is reCAPTCHA version 3 and it works differently where it gives a score of user interaction and based on that score we can decide what to do with the user's request. So if the score that this service provides when validating a user is low then we can decide to reject the user's request or to identify the user either as a bot or as a malicious user. If the score is acceptable or if it is high enough then we can say yeah this user is valid and he can go through to use our services. Then there is the reCAPTCHA enterprise which provides an entire suite of services for fraud detection and other services such as DDoS protection etc. You can find more about it if you want to by going to this URL of Google reCAPTCHA. But in this video I'm going to talk about reCAPTCHA version 2 where we are going to add a reCAPTCHA I am not a robot checkbox and I will show you how we can take the help of Google in verifying if the user is a valid user or if it is a malicious user etc. So without wasting any more time let's begin. Now the first thing that you need to do is to open up the admin console of Google reCAPTCHA and then log in into your account if you are not yet logged in. When you will open up the console then if you do not have any reCAPTCHA services enabled for any of your hosts or domains then it will ask you to register a new site. The first thing that you need to do is to give in the name of the label. So I'm just going to give the name as test. Now for reCAPTCHA type, I'm going to select reCAPTCHA version 2 because this is the one where we are going to add the I am not a robot checkbox. It also provides two more services where it validates the requests in the background and the third one is for Android. But in this video, we are going to see how we can add this checkbox. Next, you will have to add the domain. So I will come to this part later because I will show you how I'm going to do that for this video. This is the email address of owners. So your email address will come here as default. You can add more email addresses to receive any kind of notifications from Google. Let's say Google detects that someone is maliciously trying to use our web application. So it can notify us by means of sending emails to the owner's email addresses. And then you will have to accept the reCAPTCHA terms of service and this checkbox send alert to owners is checked by default. So I have already told you what this will do. It will detect problems and if it does then it will send the owners notifications about those malicious users. Now let's come to the part where we have to add a domain. So to do that I have created a new static HTML JavaScript and CSS application in Stack Blitz. So Stack Blitz is an online platform where you can create different kinds of projects like Angular, React, Vue, etc. And then you can compile those projects and see how they look like when compiled and when they are running in the browser. So in this project there are three files. First one is the index.html file, then there is a script file and then there is a style.css. So usually we use the I am not a robot checkbox when a user is trying to log in because we want to make sure that a genuine user is trying to log in and not a bot or any other malicious user is trying to log in. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the checkbox, the I'm not a robot checkbox below this login button. But I was talking about how to add the domain name. And if you will pay attention, Stack Blitz provide you a URL which you can use to access your application, your built or bundled application from anywhere on the web. So I'm just going to use this URL and we don't have to enter the HTTPS. We just have to use the domain name or the host name. So let's just do that. Now we have added everything and it's time to submit. So test has been registered and the Google's reCAPTCHA has created two keys for us. First one is the site key and the second one is the secret key. So site key is the key which we use in the browser and the secret key is the one which we use on our server. So do not expose this secret key. The site key is going to be exposed anyways. So it doesn't really matter if anyone knows about it or not because you are going to use this key to create the checkbox container within your web page. So now when we have the site key and the secret key, it's time to create the I'm not a robot component or widget and place it on this web page below this login button. Now there are two ways in which the reCAPTCHA widget can be rendered. The first one is it will render automatically where we will use a div and the second one is we will render it explicitly by creating a JavaScript function. So let's first see how we can add the widget automatically. Now the first thing that we need to do is we need to add the script element. So let's do that and add it below this script. This is the URL of the CAPTCHA API script and we have to load it in the async defer mode. The next thing that we need to do to automatically add the reCAPTCHA widget is to add a div element below this login button. So I'm just going to create a new div element. Now in this div element, first we have to add the class attribute and its value is going to be G reCAPTCHA. And then we will have to add the site key attribute. So for that, we are going to copy the value of the site key from over here when we created or registered our new reCAPTCHA. So let's just do that. I'm going to paste it over here. So whenever we make any changes, then the page on the right side is going to refresh automatically. So you can see that the reCAPTCHA widget has been added. And right now this widget is working, but we will also need to handle the outcome of the widget. Like if the Google is going to validate the user when they will click on this checkbox, then we will need to know if the validation or the verification was successful or not. To do that, we use callbacks. But before that, I'm going to show you the explicit way of adding this widget where we will not be adding the site key within this div element. And we will be using a function which will act as the callback whenever the reCAPTCHA API will be loaded. Let me just zoom it so that you can see it. So to add the CAPTCHA explicitly, the first thing that I will do is I will add a script callback function. So I'm going to add this function within this HTML page within a new script element. So let's first create a new function with the name on load callback. Now we need to add two parameters to this source value. And those two parameters are going to be the onload parameter and the render parameter. So we need to add these two parameters. Onload is going to point to the callback function, which we just created onload callback and render is going to have the value explicit. Now you have to make sure that the callback function should be available or should be loaded before the reCAPTCHA script loads. Now to ensure that you can order the callback function before the reCAPTCHA script, like I have done here in another script element, and you can or you have to use the async and default tags within the script element which is pointing to the reCAPTCHA API JavaScript file. So now to explicitly render the CAPTCHA, we need to call g reCAPTCHA function and we need to call render. Now the first argument is going to be the name of the element which is going to contain the widget. And after that, we are going to provide an options object with more information like the site key and the callback, etc. So let's just do that. Now, if you remember, we have already created a div, but we provided the site key in that div. So I'm going to remove the site key attribute from this div and I am going to, you know what, provide an ID to this div. 
so let's call it as div recapture and let's copy this id and paste it into or place it or provide it as the first argument for gcaptcha dot render function now let's provide the site key so site key property is going to have the same value just copy it from over here from recapture admin console and then paste it the widget is now here but then we will also need to provide a callback function so we need to create a new callback function so before we do that let's first talk a little bit about these callback functions to capture the response from recapture after the user interacts with it there can be three kinds of responses and we can specify callbacks for them the first one is going to be a normal or a successful callback so when the response is successfully submitted by the user then this callback gets called for any successful callback a response token will also be received as an argument and then i will show you what we can do with that response token and for that we can either add the data callback attributes to the widget div when we are adding this widget automatically otherwise we can provide it as a property within this options object when we are calling this grecaptcha.render function the second kind of callback is the expired callback this is called when the response expires and the user needs to resubmit the recapture response the third one is an error callback which is usually called when there is some kind of network connection problem and we need to notify the user about this specific issue that there is some kind of issue with their network and for that reason the recapture service is not going to work the expired callback can be added by using the data expired callback attribute and the error callback can be wired up using the data error callback now i'm going to create a new callback function and the callback function is going to be created in this script.js file so i'm going to remove this console.log statement and then let's create a new function and let's just call it success callback now within this i'm just going to provide a debugger let's go to index.html again and let's provide the name or the reference of the callback function so success callback now for some reason i'm still not seeing the widget so maybe the callback function yep there is a typo over here so now you can see that the callback has been provided and now i'm going to click on this i'm not a robot checkbox and we will receive a response if it is successful then the code execution is going to break over here at this point where i have placed debugger but to test this one i'm going to copy this url and then open it up in a new chrome tab so let's do it and open up the console and now let's click on this i am not a robot checkbox you can see that we have received a callback but because i have not added any argument over here for the response the way to check it is to add the arguments in the watch you can see that arguments has only a single argument which is the response the token which the google recapture service has sent back to us after successfully verifying the user clicking on this i am not a robot checkbox so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add an argument over here now you must be thinking what the hell is this response token well don't worry i will tell you that too the token received after a successful validation is valid for only two minutes and can be used once for verification and when we have got the response token in the browser then we are going to use this token to post a request to the google's recapture url but that request is going to be posted from the server instead of this browser so here is what the concept is google verified the user for us but now again we have to go to google and give it the token and ask hey google you just verified this guy as a real human and you gave me this token please check if this token is indeed correct if the token is correct then google will say yeah dude the token is correct and the guy is indeed a human now if a malicious script steals your token and sends it to our server within two minutes which is the time for which the token will remain valid the same token cannot be used twice also a token is associated with an account which involves a secret key and host name so the token generated in another host will also not be valid for our host let's now see how this can be done so for this application i have not created a backend so we will be using the postman app to send the post request and then verify the response so this is the postman application and you can use it to send a bunch of different kinds of requests 
you can select the type of the request from over here by clicking on this triangle now we need to send a post request the url is going to be this one google.com slash recapture and then api site verify now when we are posting a request on this url we will also need to provide two parameters the first parameter is going to be our secret key if you remember i told you that we need to use the secret key on our server the second parameter is going to be the token or the response token which google has sent us after the user has clicked on the i am not a robot checkbox so first let's add the secret key parameter and the value is going to be this one let's just copy it from over here and then paste it in the value the second one is going to be response so we can copy response when we will click on the i am not a robot checkbox let's reload this page again and then copy the token value from the browser console so let's click on this i am not a robot checkbox now remember this token is only valid for two minutes so we must hurry now i'm just going to copy the value and let's press ctrl c open up the postman app and then i think i will need to remove these quotes because they may not be needed and then send it you can see that we have received a response and if the response is successful then we will get three values the success property is going to have the value either true or false if the verification is successful then it will return true google will say yeah the token is indeed for a legitimate user and we can allow the user to enter our system or use our application the second one is the challenge underscore ts which is the timestamp at which the challenge was received and the third one is the host name so host name is the one which we have provided when we were registering our application or our web page or our web host to google's recapture and this host name is associated with this name or label test now let's try to post this same request again so because the same request cannot be verified twice so if i will post it again then you can see that success is now false and there is another property with an array timeout or duplicate it says that it is either a timeout issue or either it is a duplicate token because we have already used this token to verify the legitimacy of the user so that was all about the google recapture version 2 checkbox there are two more variants of this api this one is for the invisible mode and there is the other one which is for android do check them out if you want to and if you want to see how to use them then you can always check out this developer guide I have shared this link in the video's description. And finally, thanks for watching this video. I am Nitej. Take care and have fun.